Hello everybody, welcome back to Military TV and today is the third day of uh, Indo-Defense 2022 with me Faisal and today I'm at the stand of Lahab uh, company under the S group uh, this uh, company manufactures uh, munition and we will see what they have it's a side here with me Hi. how are you doing? Side? good, how are yeah. you? Uh, can you tell me more uh, detail about your product? yes of course, I'm uh, Saeed Al Ghafri from uh, Lahab Light Ammunition, which is based in Abu Dhabi. Yeah. And uh, we are specialized in uh, small caliber ammunition. We can go through our uh, products. Yeah. We can start from this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So here we have uh, we have in our company different and wide range of ammunition yeah. and calibers. So we'll start with the, the, small, uh, the smaller. The smaller. So the, the smallest, 9mm. Yeah. So in 9mm we have uh, the blank mm -hmm. and the ball yeah. and uh, AP. Yeah. Uh, and the ball we have uh, uh, Like uh, bullets, okay. we have one, two, four yeah. grain mm -hmm. and one, one, five grain. Yeah. Then mm -hmm. we can go to the five, five, six, yeah. five, one, five, six by uh, fifty-four millimeter mm -hmm. uh, by forty-five. Sorry, we have the blank as well. This one, right? Yeah. Oh. This is the blank, mm -hmm. and we have the ball. Yeah and tracer yeah. and uh, we have AP but we didn't uh, bring it here also in 5.56 we have two types we have M193 mm -hmm. and M855 so now we will go for uh, 5.56 yeah. by 54 millimeter mm -hmm. we have uh, also the blank yeah. and the ball as you can see tracer uh, and we have the AP armor piercing AP as well for the uh, 5.56, we have two types, M855 and M193. Yeah. M855 has uh, a penetrator in it, M193 only lit oh, inside. Uh, yeah. So, and here we have the 762, mm -hmm. 762 by, we can make it by 39, mm -hmm. and we can make it as well by uh, 51, yeah. 54. We have uh, the blank, yeah. the ball, uh, tracer AP armor yeah. piercing. Nice, nice. It's a pretty cool. Yeah, uh, and as we can go bigger, we will go to our uh, yes, the largest the caliber. Largest caliber. Yeah. yeah. Which is uh, 12.70.7. Uh, start from this one. No. Yeah, yeah. It's all. It's all the same. Yeah, the same uh, caliber. Mm, same caliber. But different uh, types. Different types. Okay. Yeah. We can start from this one. So this is the blank. Yeah, the blank. Right. It's for training purpose, mm -hmm. and we have the length as per the customer requirement. Yeah. He can choose uh, whatever type he want. Yeah. And length. Mm -hmm. And you have here, as you can see, the black tip, mm, the which black is tip. the AP armor piercing. Mm -hmm. So by the way, so uh, here are the before types. we go to yeah. to the this uh, for for this uh, this step, the same as the same, right? Yeah. So uh, where can we we use this this bullet into what types of the gun or the rifle? Uh, the rifle? These are uh, for uh, uh, vehicles. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. Like the guns uh, uh, above the vehicles. And it's, uh, 50 caliber? Yeah. Uh, 50 caliber. This is the 50 caliber. All right. It shows the vehicles. So we have also different types of the 50 caliber. We have the ball, yeah. normal. We have the tracer, API, APIT, and AP, armor piercing. Nice. And uh, as per the customer requirement, we can link, link it as he like. Yeah. Like we can start ball, tracer, yeah. AP, nice. API. Pretty Cool. So what about the two-pointed one? Yeah. yeah. Now we we we, are, we went through the military specification uh, ammunition. Yeah. But we have commercial as well. Oh, yeah. We have commercial, commercial. caliber. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For commercial purpose for hunting. Mm -hmm. uh, so for commercial. Yeah. We have. Uh, Different size. It's also available types. for, for, the, for it's the. It's available for the customers. Yes. For the customer, public customer. Uh, yeah. For the public. It's for hunting, yeah, for uh, hunting purposes. Only. So for the commercial, uh, as per the uh, customer requirements, yeah. we can afford the. Uh, 
time they, he, they like or so, the market demands. Uh, but, but anyway, uh, when this is talking about in, in customer side, so it's in, in customer side, uh, when we, they want to buy this uh, product, this munition uh, for hunting a bit, can you say, uh, can you tell us more about the price? Maybe they want to. Uh, actually, the price, I can't speak about the price oh. because uh, <laughs> it's not my specialization. Oh, yeah. And uh, we have a department for this. Oh, yeah. yeah. I thought you know the price, so maybe. No, no, it's in the viewers. business de development uh, department. Oh, okay. They I can see. help with the yeah. price. So, uh, that's all, Mr. Said. Thank you. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, explanation, Mr. Said. And we will move to the next stand. We have Nimer. Uh, they provide uh, armor vehicles. And with me, so Zach, maybe uh, he will tell us more detail about uh, the, the product. Okay, please, um, Mr. Zach, maybe you can share okay, sure. more detail about this product. I'm Zach. I'm from uh, Nima. We are a company based in the United Nations Emirates, part of the Edge Group. Edge Group is in the top 25 large companies, defense companies globally. NIMA focuses on wheeled vehicles. We build 4x4, light 4x4, medium and 6x6 vehicles. Over here on my, on my right over here we have what we call the JACE. JACE is a vehicle in use with, the, with uh, our local client and uh, with GCC clients, in, yeah. friendly clients in the region. JACE is a very highly mobile, high level of protection, MRAP type vehicle. Yeah. It'll take nine people. Oh, right. um, yeah, nine people. You can have it in a command version with less, etc. It's quite modular. You can change. As I said, very high level of mine protection, very high level of ballistic protection. Um, it has. We've recently, this I can talk about, we've recently just won a tender and we've won a contract in Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia. where we'll be um, building under license mm. in country yeah. in Saudi Arabia for their, for their armed forces. Yeah. The Jace, if you look online, there are a number of uh, videos and articles covering Jace. One is by Jane's Defense. Everybody oh, knows the magazine yeah, yeah. Yeah, we know. on YouTube. Yeah. They show a fantastic um, short clip of oh, one of I the see. vehicles that have come out of a fighting theater, fighting yeah, yeah. area, and was hit by 58 various types of rounds from 12.7 to 14.5 oh, to 7.62. All of the tires were, were, were taken down. They've got RFI inside the tires. And the, the soldiers still managed to re extricate themselves and nobody was hurt. Yeah. So if you find that video, you can get a lot of detail this on this anyway, video. Uh, uh, if uh, our enemy shoot this uh, armored vehicle with the 50 caliber, the 12.7, it'll stop at 12.7. Oh, right. yes, it's absolutely. Nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The 50 cal or the 12.7 mil, it protects it against that. It's okay. One interesting thing about the Jace, where it's different to most standard MRAPs, the engine is side mounted. Oh, the engine is here on the side, it's not in the front. Not in the front, yeah. So you can give it the same level of protection yeah. all round without having extra weight in the front. Yeah, exactly. So it gives you very good protection on yeah. the engine and the rest of the power pack. Uh, what about the price, if maybe uh, the customer want to have? The, I, I'm not going to publish the price openly, mm -hmm. um, but it's it's comparable with the bets, the, the higher level quality oh, MRAP vehicles. Mm -hmm. So it's in that price range, it's, yeah. it's comparable to those. Yeah. Yeah. So, but by the way, uh, can, you, can you tell us a bit about uh, the engine uh, power, horsepower? Yes, mm -hmm. this engine as it is here, it's a Caterpillar engine, 450 horsepower, oh, so very high, horse, very high horsepower, power, yeah. ZF gearbox. Mm -hmm. So those are commercially available as well. If a client, if a client wasn't getting the spares from yeah. NIMA, it could get it anywhere in yeah, the world. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the, the machine or the, the engine uh, produced also in uh, under the H or under NIMA or no, we buy that in. Um, we buy that. It's a military grade engine, mm. but we buy that in and we, we fit it to the vehicle. Oh yeah, I see. What, what about uh, the, the, the distance or the range of, of the vehicle? The range of the vehicle, on average, most of our vehicle range, you're looking at roughly on on a standard flat.
road, yeah. you're looking at roughly 700, 800 kilometers max. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 700 is usually That's the average. Pretty cool, pretty cool. It's, I can call this like a beast or a monster in, in, in his um, side. So now we can move for, for the other. Uh, All right, then, then outside of the chase, mm -hmm. we've got different types of vehicles. This is a smaller vehicle, it's a five seater. This is the Ajban Mark II. The Ajban range of vehicles, so the ones preceding this one, in total we've made, we've built it in the region of somewhere around 1,500, 1,600 yeah. of them over the last 20 years of the Ajban range. So All-wheel drive. This, this is 4x4, four four, four all-wheel four all drive. drive. This one holds five people. For its size, yeah. it has a very high level of protection as well, both blast yeah. and ballistic. It's ballistic. very high. Um, when clients are interested, we can give them the direct details. They prefer try and keep these things exactly. classified. Mm -hmm. This vehicle we can we can fit various types of weapons on. Mm -hmm. Same with the Jace. Sorry, I we didn't talk about which weapons. On, on the, top. Yes. Yeah. Okay, the Jace can take a 30 mil gun. This one uh, we've fitted a 20 mil gun to it. Yeah. Otherwise it's the 50 cal or, or similar weapons. Yeah. Um, we can put in we can fit a remote turret as well. Yeah. So it's operated from inside the vehicle mm -hmm. or a manual turret, depending on the client. Some clients oh. prefer the, so prefer what, what the, the mechanical the if, if you know if they're in mission and something happened they feel they could repair it easier uh, so what, what about these things yeah I see this like uh, uh, I mean like launcher or what is it? Uh, these, the, these are smoke grenades. Smoke grenades? Yeah, these are smoke grenades. So for example, typically with a smoke grenade, what would happen is if they're being attacked, they yeah. can release them, so create smoke, a smoke screen, the smoke screen and, can get, and move away. Move away. Yeah. So the engine, is it the same with the... No, the, the engine... Design? The engines on the other vehicles that we have, generally it's Cummins, mm -hmm. so the truck, Cummins truck, yeah. Allison gearboxes. Oh, so I those see. are quite standard mm -hmm. um, and it's pretty much the, the industry norm today as well. Yeah. The, the versions that we have in this vehicle and also in that wall, well, in this vehicle first, is a 300 horsepower or a 360 horsepower, oh, okay. depending on the Depends. configuration that the client wants yeah. and the the mission that he wants. So, what makes it uh, special with with uh, if compared with the LTV? What makes this special? special uh, firstly, it's a very high level of protection, extremely high for its size. Mm -hmm. It's higher than the majority of its competitors. I see, I see. So that's one. Mm -hmm. Two, Nima has got a long pedigree of building this type of vehicle. Um, as I said, in the region of about 1,500 yeah. vehicles mm -hmm. so far. It's in, it's in use in... I stand under correction, eight or nine countries oh, now in the world. Nine countries. Um, so it's it's been proven. Mm, proven. Also, another thing, it's operational, it's being used yeah. currently, it's in theatre, mm. it's not just a model or a new yeah, mock-up yeah, that's never been today. built. Yeah, 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 I see, yeah. Uh, maybe we can uh, see another uh, product of the new Yes, the okay. Hafeet Mark Hafeet. II. Mm -hmm. What, what, what I like about the Hafit and the Ajban together, yeah. as a client, you know, you can have a smaller tactical vehicle. If you need something larger, a command post, right. or an APC for 10 people, or an ambulance, we've done it as an ambulance as well. You take the Hafit, between the Hafit and the Ajban, they share 80% of their components. Logistically, it's, it becomes a lot easier to manage it's more, the, the more, fleet. We, we can, uh a car for more people inside. Yes, you can put more people. It's a larger volume, volume. larger mm -hmm. payload as well. Mm -hmm. Very good thing about the, the Ajban Ajban. Mark II, mm -hmm. where it is extremely strong against mm -hmm. its competition, mm -hmm. is we've got a very high payload capacity. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Almost 3,000 kilograms payload on this small vehicle, which is very high. Could you tell us uh, about this in engine? Is it the same with uh, Ajban? The engine is also Cummins. Mm -hmm. With this one, because it's larger and it, it, will, it will do a different job, Mm -hmm. We tend to keep to just the 360 horsepower engine, oh, which is the option we can put on that yeah. one. So we tend to keep to, the, to that engine on this oh, one. I but see. otherwise, it's also Cummins. It's the same type of gearbox as on the other one. So that's make me uh, attract, attract me when I see the wheel. And it's also different with uh, with that one, with Ajban. The wheels are actually, I'm trying to remember. 
they, they're the same wheels, same uh, wheel. pretty much. Mm -hmm. They might have a slightly larger diameter. I can't I remember. Eight, eight. This is, oh, sorry, eight? six by six? Six, six by six. Six wheels? Four wheels. Yeah, yeah. there, yes, you're absolutely, <laughs> I thought yeah. you were referring to the size of the wheel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, this it's, is a six-wheeler. Again, mm -hmm. the extra axle here yeah. to carry more weight on the back. Mm -hmm. So what about the payload? The payload of uh, payload is just over three thousand. Over three thousand. Um, it's written here. Payload. Yes, that's three thousand one hundred. No, no, no. That's payload there. Yeah, three thousand. Sorry. Three thousand yeah. kilograms. Oh yeah, I see. Uh, can, can you tell us a bit about uh, the range? Uh, he can. Go the range again. It's similar. You know, seven hundred odd kilometers. Oh yeah, I see. Um, it's a smaller fuel tank, but then then that one there, but still seven hundred kilometers on average. So this is a um, manual or tran automatic? No, automatic six-speed transmission. Oh, yeah. yeah. What, what, uh, what about the display? The display of uh, the displays. The we have an auto, we, we have a full display full inside display. electronic display etc but again we can tailor it to the client's yeah. needs so it's not always exactly the same depending on what the depending client's on what, looking what, for what the clients are hoping. that's the easy part to change yeah. you know, it's software it's that's the easy part to look at i think this is very uh, useful for uh, notice or uh, for notice a troop you know they can uh, carry more payload i think this the customer will i think this is one of the best toys for the customer if they Absolutely. want to to have yeah. you on. Yeah. So my, my last question, uh, what do you hope from this uh, Indo Defense Expo 2022? What I do hope, look, what's what's one of NIMA's fantastic abilities yeah. is we already have a number of joint ventures with countries abroad. We have agreements built under license. My hope is that we build a stronger relationship, not only at government level or I at see. edge level, yeah. but as NIMA, we yeah. build a strong relationship here in Indonesia and we can then get into a partnership where we can transfer some of the technology to be based here in Indonesia for the region yeah. as well. So that's my hope. My hope is to be able to set up some form of partnership with a local industrial partner. Yeah, thank yeah. you very much for joining me. Yeah, thank you very thank much. Thank you. Matt here with me, and he show us uh, more information about the Beacon Red. Okay, please. Uh -huh. Hi, nice to meet you. My name nice is uh, you. Hamid Al Mahiri from yeah. Beacon Red. Uh, I'm a senior uh, manager in business development. Um, we at Beacon Red uh, are a capability uh, development uh, company yeah. that focuses on uh, national security. We have multiple services that we do provide, but our main focus is uh, mostly on uh, capability development. Um, some of the aspects that we cover in capability development is, uh, for example, cyber security training. Um, we do have a process to, you know, uh, find the right people for um, the cybersecurity training, which goes under a pillar of uh, psychometric assessments. So these assessments verify the right people for the right positions, whether it was cybersecurity or any other type of training that we might be able to provide uh, to the clients. Uh, we excel also in uh, content development and curriculum development, so there are things that can Sometimes uh, clients don't want off-the-shelf uh, uh, material, but rather have a certain output and we develop based on that output, which basically is a differentiator for us delivering the training. Uh, we do our trainings in Arabic and English, so we can deliver in uh, both languages uh, right now, but we can expand on that depending on the, uh, the languages of other clients that we have. Uh, currently, we have uh, around 75 uh, uh, translators that help us with the translations. And um, uh, the other things that we actually do is uh, some of the capabilities that supports the, uh, the training and the capability development are certain products that we have that provide um, an, uh, like an extra layer on the capability development, which helps and delivering the training. So we can say that we do have certain products that support the training and certain equipments and we do sometimes provide these equipments to our clients and do the trainings 
on the equipment plus foundation training to have like the you know the extra background for those trainings also we are as we can read the training arm for uh, edge edge group so we we do also deliver trainings to multiple entities of edge uh, one of them which are uh, them which are under our cluster which we can provide uh, and signal. Um, Katam is uh, still new to us, but with signal, we've been have, having that uh, previous uh, past relationship of delivering trainings uh, trainings to them. Um, that's basically uh, how Beacon Red yeah. is, and uh, we're to you know having uh, partnerships and collaborations out of this. Uh, uh, exhibition uh, in, in the defense and it's our pleasure to be here and uh, it's nice to be welcomed in, in Indonesia. Okay, let's see what we have uh, now. Yeah, sure. Hi, uh, my name is Atif Raza. I'm the client solutions leader at Katim. And essentially at Katim, we're focused on building products that uh, provide ultra secure communications. Now, first, um, I'll talk a little bit about Katim Gateway. So this was one of our flagship products. And essentially, this is a gateway to protect all your data in transit from uh, advanced cyber attacks, specifically post-quantum computing. So essentially, it's securely designed and built from the hardware, which is tamper-proof, the software, and it has dual layer encryption. Yeah. So if one encryption is breached, it kind of has a parachute layer of oh, encryption that protects your most sensitive data. That's cool. And we have three versions. We have the bigger version, which is more for your data centers. Mm -hmm. Then we have the portable version for your smaller use cases. Mm -hmm. And we also have the ruggedized version, which is more for harsher terrains. Oh, yeah. So harsher temperatures, mm -hmm. uh, soldiers that are out on the uh, military base and the, and the field. So essentially, this is what the gateway provides. So is it possible to, to take this uh, stuff to, to the car or the mobility? So not this model, but that would be our portable model. Oh. So the portable model we've developed specifically for those use cases to cater for vehicles, for endpoints, and that will be um, released in the coming year. Oh yeah, yeah. I see. So, so what, what makes it uh, different than the, than the competitor? Sure, so a couple of things. One, it uses UAE sovereign uh, crypto, mm -hmm. which is generally stronger than the normal AES yeah. that's there. Mm -hmm. And essentially it was developed to protect against post-quantum attacks. Mm -hmm. And there's not many devices on the market that are actually developed to do that. Yeah. Normal devices protect against legacy yeah. encryption, but this is to really protect from that advanced oh, cool. um, threats that are out in the market. And it's also FIPS 4 cert certified, which is kind of high level, oh, highest level of certification that you can achieve. So which country has, uh, uh, I think which country has used this product? Sure, um, look, specifically in the UAE, but um, there are some other countries, but I can't really go into details oh, around okay, that due okay. to the nature of that, yeah. so yeah. Thank you, this is a pretty cool product. Maybe we can move to, to another sure. one now. No worries. In the gateway, yeah. I'll touch about a little about our secure phones and our secure applications. Yeah. So essentially what we've done is we've built um, a secure phone from the hardware, from the software and the application layer to protect your most sensitive information, yeah. right? So really for kind of intelligence, defense and military, your sea level, uh, royals, for instance, presidents, yeah. it's about protecting that critical um, communication yeah. so nobody can intercept that communication, yeah, cyber, cyber, right? Yeah. So let me give you a little run through of what we have here. So here we have our X2, and again, it's built securely from the hardware. So this yeah. is tamper-proof hardware, so nobody can actually physically open this yeah. and get any information. Yeah. Then we actually have the software, which is Android, but it's hardened with our own customized hardening techniques. Yeah. And then we also have our applications. So let me just quickly show you. So we've actually developed our own UAE sovereign version of, say, WhatsApp and MS Teams, mm -hmm. which we have our CADM Messenger and we CADM Conference. So essentially the same functionality, but much more secure. Oh, wow. And the advantage of this is really it gives control to the organization of your own data. Yeah. So you manage your data, you manage your keys. So I'll give you a bit of an example. As you can see here, it's kind of similar to what yes. any end user would have experienced, mm -hmm. but it's more secure and there's additional security features built in. You can do voice, you can do video with any one in your organization yeah, yeah. as well right and essentially again it's about controlling your data yeah and we have two models how we offer this we can do an on-premise deployment but we also offer this from a cloud perspective mm -hmm. as a so managed it's a very, service. very helpful for the c level and the leaders of the leaders as well but more for any use cases that have sensitive information right so if you're protecting sensitive information this application can protect that data right and make sure that data doesn't get breached or into the wrong hands uh, so is it possible for the public market so the applications 
Yes, so the applications run on any device. They're not specifically bound to this device here. Yeah. If you have an Android, if you have an iOS, mm -hmm. that can get pushed out and you can still have that secure oh, communications from messaging and voice. Yeah. yeah. So that's pretty cool. Maybe we can... Uh, sure. So, another so the last stop. product, and which is similar to what I described yeah. here, similar functionality. Again, it's a secure phone, which is the R01. Uh -huh. But essentially, this was kind of built as a ruggedized model, mm -hmm. which was built more for your harsher terrains. Yeah. So we stand harsher temperatures, mm -hmm. um, harsher terrain around, depend it's more for kind of soldiers out in the battlefield. Yeah, yeah, um, it can withstand, it's waterproof. Yes. It could get run, we've tested it by but running over by a truck. This protection is high level. Sorry? This protection is high level. Yeah, more from a physical more protection, right? We've even tested it being run over by a truck yeah. and it survived. Yeah. I could drop this right now, but it might break the ground, so yeah. I won't do that at the moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But essentially, the phones capability-wise, they're similar, mm -hmm. but this is just a ruggedized version that can yeah. protect from more harsher terrains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the application is same, but it's more protected. Than exactly, exactly, uh, right. More physically protected. More physically protected. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's nice, pretty cool uh, stuff for the cyber attack. I think this is this all these three stuff. So at the can. moment, these are our three main products. We do have other capabilities um, that we're building as well. And again, ultimately, we're focused on secure communications, secure. right? Okay. That can be across networks, applications, infrastructure, yeah. anything that really needs secure comms. Yeah, thank you yeah. very much for your Thank time. You. I'll see you. Thanks.